Hey there, it is charcuterie time, okay? <laughs> Um, hopefully you're getting my newsletter. I talked about that a little bit in there this month um, with kind of a supply list, but I really want to help debunk and demystify this really easy um, way to prepare food, finger food, right? Lunchables, grab and go, that kind of thing. So here's kind of the, just the steps that I go through. Um, and this is going to be really easy on purpose because I hope um, what you can see through this is just by doing, you know, some simple cuts and some simple arrangements. You can take very basic, very clean ingredients and you can make something really pretty. Okay. And so that's, I think we're really where charcuterie, it's harder to say than it is to do, um, kind of it has become that claim to fame. Okay. So first thing I do is I just kind of plan out, right? So if I'm doing a, a huge board, I will get that board. Um, so here is a pretty large platter, for example. Um, and then I'm, I'm choosing to grab a couple um, little ramekins. So I kind of lay those there. And I, I am that person where I actually take post-it notes and I lay things around. Um, of what I'm going to put kind of where and inevitably I will forget something and so that for me is an easy way before I'm actually touching any ingredients to just kind of have an idea of my plan it's not it's not perfect because charcuterie definitely involves some creativity um, but it's at least a plan to figure out you know how many cheeses do you need how many things like that so obviously the bigger the board the more ingredients you need that doesn't mean you need more like variety of ingredients you might just need more quantity okay um so all that being said this one again is super simple so here's here's kind of what i've picked for this board um and then we're going to come back and i'm going to show you a, a couple little fun things to do so i picked a couple salamis and they are if you can see um i was more interested in the the different sizes um than i was in the particular brands um, and so you can do salami. If salami is a no-go for you, um, prosciutto is a, is a great option or pepperoni even. If you get pepperoni at the um, deli where they slice it, you know, just ask them to slice it really thin um, and we'll be able to do the exact same. We're gonna do some flowers. You'll see exactly how that works um, regardless kind of of what meat you pick, okay? Um, the next thing I picked is cheeses. And this one, like you guys can go crazy on cheeses. If you if you've ever gone to a store that has like a really great cheese um, shop, if you will, within, it's overwhelming. <laughs> There's a like four thousand choices, um, and unless they're doing samples, you just don't really know. So I kind of like to just think about who my audience is, and and I will slowly, you know, incorporate some more fun cheeses. But I also really love to pick things that I know, like for example, my kids love, um, because if my kids like them, pretty much everyone is going to like them. So if it's a little bit of an unknown. You can play it a little bit safe, but I also will say that's an area you really can have some fun. Um, like I know I've seen at Costco, they have like a cheddar with cranberry in it now this time, of, you know, holiday time of year, you can go with some pepper cheeses or habanero or, you know, all these different options. But again, like just kind of survey your your audience your, of who you're preparing your board for um, and then and then just pick, make your picks accordingly. Okay, so here is what I pick for cheeses. Um, I did just a base, well, this is not basic because these people um, in Ireland probably spend a lot of time developing this, but <laughs> it is cheddar. It is aged cheddar. Um, and I actually got two of those. And then I did get a brie. Um, this brand is particularly um, awesome. It's very, it's creamy, it's mild. It doesn't have as much of that. If you're not a big brie fan, um, it doesn't have as much as that kind of brie taste. It's it's much more of a creamy spreadable cheese. Um, and then I went with some goat cheeses and these are my personal favorite, but my kids really like these as well. Um, this particular um, farm, uh, Creamery, they do, this is just a plain, they've got this blueberry vanilla, they've got a garlic and herb, they've got honey. And so even within kind of that goat cheese, um, I've even done, right, just a goat cheese, um, you know, cheese and fruit board in the past as well because they're so good. Um, they're spreadable, but these, especially the plain goat cheese, um, because it will spread, it goes really, really awesome with um, like jams, with nuts, um, 
honey, all those kind of things. Okay, so I like that it's a little bit of a base that you can build on um, and just kind of experiment with. Okay, so that is, those are my cheese choices. Okay, then remember we had some ramekins. And so in there, I'm going to do um, this raspberry habanero sauce. And if you haven't tried this, sounds spicy it's not this particularly goes amazing um with this goat cheese it goes really awesome with the cheddar and it goes amazing with the brie so it's a great option to have there it gives a tiny bit of a kick um but it's a sweet kick and um super yummy okay the other one i picked was this fig spread um because I don't know, it looked good, that's why. So this is an area you can have some fun with, grab some you know, jams or jellies, um, just things that pair over very nicely with, with cheese. Um, I always like to try also um, green apples for whatever reason for me are a really good taste. If I can pair apple with cheese with jam and it, and it tastes good, um, I, that is, is just kind of a good test for me of, of jams, okay? Um, all right, I did pick olives. Um, I personally don't care for olives, um, but these are really easy to buy. You know, this is obviously a smaller package, so I will just do a bowl um, on the uh, board because all of that liquid in there, I don't want that all over, you know, soaking in everything, so I will do a small bowl. Um, and then I decided to go with just some berries. So a lot of berries here, um, but you're probably wondering what in the world I'm doing here. So here's one thing I've learned about cheese boards is if your berries are wet, <laughs> that causes a problem. So I washed them and then this is just a sheet pan where I laid out some paper towels. Um, and then, you know, I even just lay one over the top where they basically will just air dry. Um, and, you know, then when I put them on the board, they're not running water all over and making cheese, um, I don't know what the technical term for that is. Mushy, watery, either way, nobody likes that. I don't like that. So uh, a couple other things that you can add into your board and, and choose these based on personal. These are some praline um, pecans and you could do walnuts, you could do cinnamon almonds, you can do anything. Um, I went with these because I've tried them. They are, they are store-bought. They are not difficult to make, um, but in terms of all of this, sometimes it is nicer um, to just have a few ingredients that you don't also have to make because the goal is to do this easy, right? Um, and then the last thing I like to add, this is a local, kind of local to me, um, Honey Farm. And they have these darling little jars of honey. So I like to just include this with either a honey dipper um, or just a, a small spoon, um, a char kind of a charcuterie spoon. And I will show you those as well. Um, and so this will sit on the board just in the little jar. And it's not a colossal amount where, you know, it, it gets wasted and people are re-dipping. Um, it's, you know, just kind of a small amount. But again, this these honeys, um, I will use one of these, go really awesome with the cheeses that I've picked um, and just drizzling it over the cheese. So the idea really is to be able to mix and match and pair everything together as best you can. Um, but that is the ingredients, okay? A little bit long explanation of the why behind making this super easy. Um, the, the other thing I did not show you is that I will do some crackers um, and those should be really easy. Um, to pick, I like to pick crackers that are a little more crunchy because if you're spreading cheese onto them, like nothing is worse than your cracker <laughs> breaking into 100 pieces all over. Um, but even like, you know, at Costco, there is multi-packs of, you know, like the water crackers with different varieties. So those are an awesome choice as well because it just makes it really easy. It takes a lot of that guesswork out. Um, Baguettes, you could slice baguettes and toast them. Like this is a base kind of board, but you could do a lot of things with it. Um, I'm gonna just pause here and then I will be back to show you some fun things to do with meats and cheeses in terms of cutting. Uh, and then I think what you'll see is just from a handful of, of ingredients, just a little bit of art um, comes together really nicely and people love it. So, okay, we'll see you in a bit.
Okay, we're back now with the board angle. So my next step on the board, and again, this doesn't matter whether you're doing a large one or even just a small plate, is to kind of lay everything out. Um, I'm a little bit concrete sequential in that respect, but what I like to do is lay out, you know, kind of where the bigger items are gonna go. Um, and then what's gonna happen is, is we're gonna cut these um, or you, you know, present them and then all of the spaces in between are going to be where our berries our crackers and things of that nature are going to go okay so we're going to actually go ahead and start with the cheddar i'm going to show you a fun little way to cut that okay so we're switching out here look at that there's our finished product and that came from just this simple um, block of cheddar cheese. So I'm going to show you that. Okay, so you're going to lay it on its side. And if you wanted these um, cheese wedges to be, um, I guess they're wedges, <laughs> to be smaller, you could cut this block or any block that you're using in half and do that same kind of method with that. But I'm going to go ahead and um, do all of this the same. So with your knife, you're going to cut on the diagonal through the cheese just be really careful that you kind of follow the corners. Okay, you've got two triangles then. And then we're simply going to kind of pick our width and slice this way. Okay, and I won't cut all of this, but I'm gonna give you an idea. So then you'll, you know, lay this way and you're basically just flipping <laughs> every other one. Um, so it looks really fancy, but I think you can now see it's it's not actually <laughs> super uh, crazy to make. Um, so I'm gonna do that. And then these, as, as we just laid out, are gonna go right back on the board in that spot where I had kind of pre-decided, pre okay? All right, uh, boards need to be flexible. So if you remember, I had the cheddar here. Um, I switched some things around. I switched to put all my goat cheeses together in the brie here, just based on as I put the cheddar on the board, kind of where it fits. So just to give myself a little feel of progress here, <laughs> I'm gonna do an easy one. Okay, I'm gonna add my nuts there. Okay, so there is that one done. Okay, now the next one, the goat cheeses, I'm actually um, going to just unwrap them and they're just going to set right on the board and with the brie, um, I am gonna cut it into wedges in a, in a circle. So that one, um, because it's being served cold, um, it's a little bit easier for people to simply grab and go. Okay, so take all wrapping off of the cheese. Okay, and make sure, one thing I find helpful on this is that your knife is as big as the cheese. So if you're using a larger brie, um, you might wanna grab a bigger knife. Um, so if you can make cuts all the way through at the same time, it just helps to keep your cuts a little more um, crisp if you will okay and so then i'll just go this is where all of that fraction work in school <laughs> came in handy i'm gonna cut these then into thirds um, and as you cut brie it gets a little bit um kind of loses its strength so just slow and steady slow and steady okay all right so i'm gonna finish this it's going back on the board All right, now you can see over here we've got the brie and then also the goat cheese and you could choose to slice this um, but instead of doing that what I'm going to do um, this is these bowls and all these awesome little knives come together in a set. Um, I also have these little spoons which I will use for the jams um, but the knife I will just actually insert the knife into that cheese. Um, this knife is great for a cheese that would need to be cut. Um, here's another one. This this is awesome for goat cheese as well. It kind of does a wedge. Um, and then a fork is nice. 
for just simply picking up and you know plating. Um, so there is that. Um, we are now ready to move on to our meat. Okay, now it's time to move on to the meat. So whether you're using a salami, prosciutto, um, or any you know pepperoni like we talked about, here's a couple things that you're gonna need. You're gonna obviously need the meat, um, and then you're gonna need a couple glasses, um, or if you have like the Pamper Chef measure all cup, that works well. But I do find that glasses with a, a thinner um, glass work better. The thicker, the, the fatter um, your product is gonna be. So we're gonna use this, um, this glass for the larger salami and what we're simply going to do this is so easy is you're just going to basically fold it around okay and then you're just overlapping and folding and you can make these as full as you want um, obviously the closer that you overlap like when you're finished your um, flour your salami rows is gonna be tighter together Okay, but you're just going to basically keep going around and around and around and around and around and around and around, and around <laughs> until it is as full as you would like it. Okay, and you can see I'm getting a little spread out here, but that does not matter. You can just keep going. I typically like to use the package um, just because then there's not waste, but you could make these um, really tiny. You can make them really large and we are doing probably something in between. <laughs> okay, so there's my whole package. Um, I personally, I just like to kind of fold it down a little bit. Um, and then if you have some sort of a small bowl that looks nice for serving, um, this works awesome because what happens with these is unless they're surrounded, they kind of fall apart. Um, so you can either put them in a bowl or what I like to do is when I'm laying out my my board, I actually just leave the glass there to hold the rows in shape and then you can put things around and then it, obviously when you remove the, the glass, it will, um, if it expands, it's fine. Um, but to keep it a little bit more um, kind of put together, I'm just going to actually set it in this bowl, okay? And so it's still on the top um, there, okay, for now. Um, and then I'm going to do the exact same thing with the smaller salami. It's just, it's going to look the same but a little different, and I'm going to use a smaller um, glass will do the exact same thing. I won't use this entire package. I may make two of these and then I'll just place in this bowl. Okay, so I'm going to finish that. Okay, so there is our two variations and just to show you like as people would, you know, serve this, um, they're just literally going to pull like a petal and it's going to just come out like that. So they kind of self-fill. Um, but again, the glasses will help to keep the shape. Both of these are in those same bowls, but just to give you an idea kind of of the different salamis and how they look um, when they're um, put into a fun flower. Okay, we are back. Okay, so once those cheeses are done, the salamis are in, it really is just about kind of filling the spaces. So I went with three different cracker varieties here and I kept them separated so people could see. And then um, obviously blueberries, I threw in some apples and then I'm just going to add um, the jam. Or This is the fig spread here with the spoon. Okay, and then we've got that raspberry habanero that we talked about. You got a little punch of color in the middle. Um, I was gonna do other berries, but they were really mushy. <laughs> so um, I didn't and I left this as is, but then we also talked about um, the little knives. So these I'm just gonna like basically put in the cheeses. So they are ready for, this is ready for serving. I'm going to leave the forks on the cheddar and I'm just going to lay that for there. Okay. So there it is, you guys. Um, this, right, I didn't cook or bake any of this. Um, it's just uh, all store-bought, great cheeses, um, meats, fruit, and then just doing some fun cuts and arrangements. 
and look at that. Isn't that awesome? All right, uh, so those boards, um, the cheese, right? The cheese charcuterie, and then I also did a dessert one. Um, pictures were just before this little snippet here. Um, all are done, we're delivered, uh, we're enjoyed. And so the next uh, piece of my to-do with this is there are always extras, um, like berries. So I will figure out, right, either freeze those or throw those together for a crisp, uh, throw them on some brownies so they do not go to waste. Um, and then that is charcuterie, a basic, basic, um, kind of start of where you can go from that um and just build on that and have some fun so i would love to hear some feedback okay you guys know i always ask for feedback what do you think think this is something you will do small scale large scale in between scale um what else would you add like now that you kind of have an understanding of kind of the base um you know, what else would you add? What what kind of fun cheeses? Um, I will also say this is a great, you know, kind of holiday time of year is an awesome time to find kind of pre-packaged charcuterie options for you. So like Costco, for example, does sell a, um, I believe it's three pack of cheese that's charcuterie and it is, um, they rotate the cheeses that are in that package. Um, I know they've also got like that cranberry we talked about earlier. Other stores do as well. Um, it is just nice to have that kind of pre-made pairing just for things to try. Um, you can also find charcuterie um, varieties of meats where there are different meats already in the package. So one thing we didn't we only did in this in this little class the salami rose, um, which works for the salami. Um, there are, are other ways of you know folding meat, so it's kind of a together. Lots of different options, triangle folds. There's a lot of options, but I think the salami rose is so fun uh, because it's super easy and even when the kids saw the picture um, today, said, "How did you do that? Like it looks really fancy, but now you guys know it's not." <laughs> so hopefully you've enjoyed this and just have a little bit of background um a little bit of base and maybe some confidence to go give it a try um give me a shout if you have questions um and then off offer that feedback below so thanks everybody